Hello everyone, good afternoon again and welcome to our Being Black in Publishing Forum. We're very thrilled that you are here, so thank you for joining us, for making time out to join us. Um, Being Black in Publishing is a Cassava Republic Press initiative designed to connect um, seasoned Black publishing professionals from across the world with aspiring young African and Afro-diasporic individuals interested in finding out more about um, a career in publishing. So this has been a month-long initiative and we've had a series of panels with different industry experts basically sharing their experience. Some of you in the room have joined yes. um, our sessions. I can see some faces that, sorry, some names that joined right. us last week. Okay. So thank you so much. Okay. Today our start. panel is right. the last um, because I'm going to discussion, and we're going to be discussing with um, some very important people who are involved in sales and marketing. Um, they'll introduce themselves shortly uh, as I hand over to my colleague. But before that, just to share some housekeeping points with you, we welcome you to join the conversation in the chat and also on social media. So please share any um, thoughts, comments that you have in the chat. Any questions that you have as well, please put them down in the chat. Our panel panelists will be answering questions um, later on. Um, part of this program also is we have an internship that we are opening up to people based in Nigeria. So if you're a young person in Nigeria and you're looking to find an internship and um, working in publishing, please. Um, visit our website or check our social media for the links to send in your application. We've um, brought on board some very important partners like some people um, on our panel today from Roving Heights, um, as well as Masobe and some other companies in Nigeria. So be sure to send in your application. Applications are open until the end of the month. So we still have like a week to go. So thank you so much. My name is Rhoda. Um, I do marketing at Cassava Republic. I will hand over to my colleague Tito now to take over the session. Thank you so much, Rhoda. Uh, my name is Tito and I'm an editorial assistant at Casaba Republic Press. So just um, something, a quick thing before we um, move on. Can everyone please mute their mics and remain muted um, just so that we don't disrupt the um, meeting? Thank you very much. So um, today is our sales and marketing panel, the very last panel in the um, the very last panel in our Being Black in Publishing Forum. And we are joined by um, esteemed and very seasoned panelists from Jacaranda, Masobe, and um, Rovin Ides. So um, I would like to just dive right in and start immediately. So um, for our panelists, what um, inspired you to pursue a career in books? especially and in book selling, in sales, in marketing. And can you please share your journey and what drew you to the world of books? Adi Dotson, do you want to go first? I was wishing that I would be the last person, but it's fine. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's a pleasure to be on the panel. Uh, my name is Adi Dotson, and I'm one of the co-founders at Roving Heights Bookstores. Um, I guess to, um, you know, plunge straight into the question, I think, not I think, uh, my my journey into books uh, started from a deep love for reading, um, you know, and I guess anyone who works in the, uh, you know, in the book industry or in the publishing industry has, I imagine, are also readers, people who love books, and as far as I could remember, uh, like I've always been in love with books and it was just natural for me to find myself you know, in this space. Uh, I sold my first book in my last semester as an undergrad um, and then I just uh, helped uh, two self-published authors, uh, then self-published, uh, Judy Beer and, um, um, and El Nukoya. I had helped them organize a the book within uh, you know, in, 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 in my university. And then I started to ask myself questions like, uh, why, aren't the, why, why aren't bookstores carrying these kinds of books? Uh, what will it take to, you know, create a small army of, of people who love books who can also be, you know, booksellers on the side? And, um, and I guess that's, I was just asking myself those questions. Why is it difficult to find, you know, bookstores, you know, around the neighborhood where I, where I lived, you know, 
And so, um, uh, you know, I started to flirt around with like, you know, ideas. And so my first job after, uh, after university, uh, after I'd, you know, got in a place of my own, the next thing was then to start set up a side business uh, that was helping self-published authors distribute their books to, uh, to bookstores in Lagos. Uh, and so I had a very demanding job as a nine to five, you know, uh, management consultant or, you know, pretty much all my life, you know, uh, in front of a computer. Uh, and so at some point I got really tired and then my sister came on board and then we decided to, you know, um, you know, really take it seriously. So she started to experiment with a lot of, um, uh, you know, online social media tools. Uh, and then I guess, you know, it, it came at a time when, uh, you know, social media was, you know, was also catching on in, in, in Nigeria. Um, so we opened our first book, Brick and Mother stall in uh, 20, 2018 in Lagos. Um, uh, the second one in Abuja, 2019, yeah, the following year. And it's, we've been on the rise since then. So I guess that's my journey into, into books. Thank you so much for that, Tatu. I really liked the fact that you mentioned that, um, you know, everyone, almost everyone who works in publishing loves reading, because I think that that's like everyone's journey into publishing, the reading first, and then, you know, working there. So, um, Jasmine, do you want to go in next? Hi, yeah. Um, uh, so I'm Jasmine Brary. Um, I work at Jacaranda Books. I'm currently COO, but I started with um, kind of at the start of the company with the founder Valerie Brandis. So I've worn many. Mostly has been around um, sales and marketing and and kind of like areas within that, which I still get quite heavily involved in because it's so important to the business. But in terms of my journey into publishing, I actually did not initially think of publishing as a route for me. Um, I've always been like a very, very passionate reader. I was the girl in the playground at school that would just be sitting on her own reading a book while everyone was running around. It was always my thing. Um, and it was when I was at university, um, I had just come back from my year abroad in Spain. I was very dedicated to getting a, a career that related to translation work or teaching languages because I love languages. And um, I just needed some work, basically. So I started to help a very small press. It's called Holland Park Press, doing some editing online. And it was through working with them that I actually learned about this industry and got some insight into this industry. Um, and so I thought, okay, I might want to do something related to publishing and sent out a load of CVs as I neared graduation and found that publishers don't really respond to you um, very quickly. But what was kind of new around that time was using social media. So I tweeted every publisher that I could find that I was using social media at the time to ask if they had any, if they needed any help with any events or anything like that. Um, I didn't know at the time what area of publishing I would want to go into. I knew nothing about it, but I just thought if I can get in the door, I can get a bit more insight into what it was. So I tweeted out. Um, one of the first people that responded to me was obviously being Twitter, it was mostly publicity departments, and it was um, Camilla Elworthy at Pan Macmillan who replied that it was rather unusual that I was um, contacting through Twitter, but she was willing to take a chance and see if I wanted to come in for like a week or two and do some work experience. And that's kind of my first kind of like opportunity to do work experience in a bona fide publishing house. Um, and from that, I think I did an, like another seven internships and met a woman called Suzanne Collier, who runs an organization called bookcareers.com. And she kind of was a person who let me understand what this industry really is and what different areas you can go into and learn a bit more about it. And for me, it was astonishing that in all my life, really loving reading and literature so much, no one through school, no one ever suggested publishing as a route for me. So I very much had to find out on my own through internships, um, through placements, going to events. Um, I would like offer to live tweet at events because it was like the new cool thing to do then. So it was like live tweeting at events, just getting myself um, to know people and to network as much as possible. Um, and one of those internships was at Profile Book. So it was my first paid internship. It was three months. And it's where I met Valerie Brandes, who is the founder of Jacaranda Books. Um, and kind of we hit it off there. I left to go and work. Actually, I, I eventually got like a full-time job at Pan Macmillan. So I went to work at Pan Macmillan and Val went off to do her own thing. And we met maybe two TV. years later after that. Um, Hello? 
Yes, we can hear you. So sorry, please keep going. So sorry. Oh, um, we met maybe like two years after that. Um, and she told me that she was going to start a new publishing house, Jacaranda Books, and it was very much dedicated to promoting and publishing Black voices primarily and addressing the lack of diversity in our industry. And that was all she had to say. I was sold, never looked back. Um, <laughs> Jacaranda has been going for almost 11 years now. And that's it. I, I found my home, essentially. Yeah, thank you so much for that, Jasmine. Um, the fact that you said that, you know, you there was no direct path, you had to look for a path into publishing, you know, you didn't, like, there wasn't a way, you know, and I think that's something that a lot of people share, even people on here, the fact that we did not even know that there was a career path in publishing. Mm -hmm. So, um, and that's why this um, panel session is so important. Um, thank you so much, Jasmine. Everyone, do you want to um, go on next, please? Hey, hello, everyone. My name is Ilma Beret, and I'm um, the content manager for Master Bay Books. Uh, my journey, I think it's similar to a lot of people also in publishing because, I've, again, I've always been a reader. So I used to go to seven e-books per week at the time. I remember my parents used to give me more than a few scenario for lunch, and I would not buy lunch at school. I would just save it. And then on Friday, we'd go under the bridge. So it was like this 300 and 200 naira books. So I pick like two or three, depending on how much money I had, then I just read. So I've always been good at reading, at writing. Of course, that grew into something else. But when you are growing up, especially in Nigeria, especially in the time we grew up in, there was always a, an idea that you couldn't make money off of writing or reading or any of those. It was not a business that you could, you know, look into and be like, okay, this is the career path I can follow. So I did not consider what I did, like something that was marketable or something that I would use in like, the future. I actually went on to study law. I graduated. I came to Lagos. I still had no clue what I was going to do with my life because I did not see myself wearing black and white and going to court to argue over cases. I found it incredibly boring. So when I first moved to Lagos, I think I started my part in writing. And of course, um, the CEO of Masobi Books and I did have like, a personal relationship. So we've been talking books, we've been speaking, publishing, but not in the sense of this is something that you should do. This is a career path, just like in a wide sense of it. And then towards, like, I think a year after I got to Lagos, I saw like Masobi Books, it was, it was, it was a thing, it was coming up. I, I still had no clue what I was going to do, but at this point, I did have skills in basically every aspect of like the pub publishing process from like the finding of the manuscript, the editing, the proofreading, all of that. I did have some experience in almost every area of it. So I sort of came on board. Um, first, it was just um, read manuscripts as is viable, look through this, proofread that. And then at some point it became, okay, so how do you, I mean, you have all of this, like this composite of skills and you, you need to put it into something a bit more structured. So that is when I actually began to look at marketing like as a career path. And I would say it's been quite um, it's been quite the journey, especially since you know you just you stumble into it at this point. So it's not really something that you prepped for, it's not something that you went to school for, it's not something that people taught you. So you learn as you go. And because of that, you know, that loop and that curve, it's uh, it's a bit unpredictable too. Yeah. Thank you so much for that. Um, so something you all mentioned is, you know, stumbling into it. And in your case, I did also um, starting off as an as a side also. And, um, you know, as Black people, we, because of the nature of publishing, publishing is very white. And as Black people, we actually do need to have like structured entrances into publishing so we can, you know, publish more books that look like us so that the public, publishing scene can look a, a lot more like, you know, us, like Africans, like Afro diasporans. So why do you think that um, we need more of these people, more Black people in sales and marketing particularly? Jasmine, do you want yeah. to go on first? Um, oh, yeah, okay. sure. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm happy to go. Sure. So I think, I mean, I always, when I hear this question, I also, I always think, well, why not? You know, why would, like, even the concept of the question, why wouldn't we have Black people in all these areas? We are as talented, we have as much to give as anyone else. I'm um, looking at for all the reasons why. 
I think we can underestimate the power of the publishing industry of creating content and managing content to control our stories, our narratives, to control the history that we pass down to future generations of us being here and what it was like to be us, you know? And we know that they always say that history is written by those who are victorious. And that's because they have the control over the means of communication and recording history and publishing is a key part of that. So for me, just as us thinking about future generations and how we want the world to understand, for example, what's happening now in the world and what our real identities were, it's important that we're involved in that. From a business perspective, Honestly, the, the, if we think about, we are, as Black people, a global majority. There is a lot of income to be made and a lot of great business to develop by acknowledging that Black people across the world have so much to give and that for such a powerful industry, keeping us out of it for fear of, I guess, relinquishing power is just a really bad business move. Um, it's very limiting. It It's not only limiting in terms of the stories that go out there, but how they're put out there, how they're sold, how creative we can be in the ways of getting through to the end user and the end customer through both marketing and sales. So I think both for the fact for ourselves as a people, for making sure that we are recorded in history the way we want to be, we need to be present in those areas because sales particularly and marketing have so much power over what can be published. Um, and I think that's something that's not taught enough when it comes to those meetings of what will go through and how you present it and what the cover will look like and how effective it will be. Sales and marketing are crucial to that decision. So we need to be in those areas um, for us to be able to have our stories, but also because it makes for better business to make sure that those departments are as diverse and open minded and creative as possible. Thank you so much, Jasmine. That's all I noted you wanted to go on. Yeah, thanks. I think it's a, it's a very, very important question. Like the fact that uh, the, at the moment, there's a lot of uh, underrepresentation of Black people, of people that look like us, you know, in publishing. Uh, the first shocker I got attending my first uh, London Book Fair, uh, I think in 2019, was just how white, <laughs> you know, uh, Olympia Hall was, right? You know, like just loads of white people, and then you would actually walk past a black person and just like acknowledge that you know, helped me for the very first time, right? And I think it's you know for me it was you know I also find it a struggle sometimes uh, with convincing publishers, particularly publishers who do business within the UK and the US, to devote resources to like you know marketing you know the books that they sell to us, right? You know whether they are books written by Africans or books written by or popular books that are written by even you know um, you know. Uh, Europeans, right? Uh, and then they just can't get it, right? They can't relate to the experience that, like, look, you have uh, a vibrant country like Nigeria where you have, like, you know, millions of your tens of millions of, of young people that are on social media. And then, you know, and I go to the London Tube and I see, like, um, you know, outdoor ads of books and they're spending, you know, tens, hundreds of millions of pounds, you know, promoting a single author. And then, you know, we're doing business worth hundreds of thousands of pounds every year and they can't devote, you know, a thousand pounds to just social media marketing for a book. They can't get it. So I think that having like, you know, um, uh, the, you know, adequate representation of black people who can, uh, you know, people who look like us, who can uh, speak to like our realities and make them understand that this is a market that you're ignoring at your own peril, I think is very, very important, right? And just like Jasmine said, um, the fact that, you know, Sales and marketing is a very crucial part of the of the of the industry, right? The books that get the most attention, the books that get the top of mind are books that actually enjoy the most, you know, marketing resources, right? If they're putting marketing firepower behind a particular book, the odds are high that those books are likely to do well, right? You know, and so just you know, having people who can, you know, say, look, you know, let's also push these kinds of books, you know, reading, you know, for this particular market, let's market it in a, in a way that will connect to them. Or, uh, you know, you don't want to spend so much money, but there are also other unique ways of doing it that you be able to also get the work done in reaching this um, this segment of the market. I think it's really, really important, right? Uh, and I think that, you know, the publishing industry really needs to, uh, you know, uh, have some serious reflection on, on just, you know, representation, right? Uh, it's not fair that, uh, you know, you're serving a market and then it looks like, you know, the only people who, for structural reasons, for perhaps some deliberate reasons are, you know, just, you know, people of a particular race, right? I think it's, you know, there's a lot of benefits that that would accrue to them from just, you know, uh, embracing diversity. And I think that that's, uh, that, that's even more, 
even if they won't look at that from the strictly commercial point of view. Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much, Adi Dotto. If more, do you want to add anything to the conversation? Yeah, I mean, from like both like a marketing perspective and also from like a reading perspective, definitely need more black people in publishing because as they have said, it's a very white space. And it's it's so it's such a disconnect most of the times when you are framing especially global conversations around books. And even when it's like African authors or black authors, they speak about books in such a way that it's it's a bit alienating for the people who you are marketing the book to. And you are describing an African reality that is not very familiar with us. And the conversations that we are having around books are not very, very black centered. I don't, I don't think like we are fostering conversations that encourage black people in the space, even in like casual communications, even in the way books are marketed, the, um, uh, the set ways books are marketed, the, the kind of conversations people are having, the book readings, the author thoughts. You know, it's not, it's not really pushing black authors front and center. And as a result of that, even like the African publishing space is still growing, it's still learning. And I feel like those are the lessons that are being propagated because we are borrowing a marketing style that doesn't suit us, doesn't teach us anything. It doesn't push our books the way we need to push our books. And so essentially, every single person who is in marketing in Africa, who is in marketing in Black Tech, is learning new ways of marketing books that are not already set. And it would, be, it would have been nice to have a blueprint you know, to go with, to move forward. And I think that, okay, now that we are here, it is very important to have as many people as we can learning together, going together, setting like blueprints for others to follow behind us, because that's the only way we are going to actually make any progress in the industry. Ooh, thank you so much. Um, I really resonated with that because something I really think about a lot in publishing, especially um, we publishers and booksellers from Africa, is the fact that there is no structure the way they are stru uh, publishing structures in the UK, the US, in the Western world. So essentially, we have to build our own structures for sales, for marketing. And, you know, I think the opportunity that gives us is the opportunity to really experiment, to try things, and if they fail, try something else. So thank you so much, everyone, for your answers. Um, so from all this, we know now that we do need Black people in, in publishing. So what, um, can you like please provide an overview of like the roles and responsibilities that um, potential professional, professionals rather would need to know and how they contribute to the success of books? Anyone can go first. Okay, Jasmine, can you go first, please? <laughs> I'm sure. Um, so I think it's an interesting question for me because my work in sales and marketing has definitely been developed from just doing it in the sense of we started the company, we needed to make sure that we sold and that we marketed our books. And we are, at the time when we started, we were two black women. We didn't have a team and we were already being very much siloed as these two black women doing this black thing. Um, yeah. And while I think both of us, so both me and Valerie had experience in the industry, exactly what was said before, that experience, that model didn't necessarily suit the audience we wanted to reach. And what we just realized we had to do was to learn from that, but then make it fit our own. Um, I think for me, what's really what's really important in terms of uh, being in a sales and a marketing role is really being aware of who your audience is, um, make sure that you are aware of how to do market research and to connect with your audience and find out who your audience is and identify that audience. That's really key. And also be commercially aware of um, what is happening out in the industry and not to the point, which is what happens often in, in UK publishing, not to be aware of it to then limit what you can do, but to be really observant of what is setting well, why it's setting well, how it's being put out there, marketed and sold. Um, I think uh, marketing is obviously very essential, but there are things that are specific to how you sell in books um, to retailers that's also very important to learn. Um, so to make sure you're doing that research, there's one thing that for me is really important that is not specific to marketing and sales. I think it's specific to anything that you do in publishing 
is to understand fully that publishing is a business. And the bigger the publishing house that you're in, I think the less you get to see that part of it, right? So if you are in a very big publishing house and you're an editorial or marketing or sales, you're only in that area. Sales probably has the most connection to the kind of business of it because it's dealing with the finance. But understanding and learning about the business of of publishing and business in general, um, I think is particularly for Black people where um, I can only speak from a from a British experience, but even being in our own published house, definitely if you're working in a publishing house that is owned primarily by white people, is that you do have to sadly work a lot harder to get the most basic mediocrity is not accepted from a black person, especially not a black woman. Um, but also for yourself and to really be able to protect your own career path, you have to fully understand where you fit within the ecosystem. I think so many people get trapped in being the comfort of a particular area or particular role and not fully understanding the business landscape of, of publishing and that impacts how you grow. So I would say beyond specific things for sales or marketing, if you really want to be successful in this industry, understand business and the business of publishing. And I think that will take you a long way. I'm not sure if that was a specific enough answer. So if it wasn't. Um, I think I'm going to re-echo your sentiment, Jasmine, right, around like, you know, the, the powerful role um, sales and marketing professional, um, you know, plays in, in just in, in ensuring the success of, of a publishing venture, right? As a bookseller, I think that, you know, the books that I've seen from historical data that tend to do well, you know, in my own stores are books that are, you know, are marketed and sold in a particular way, right? And then it starts from even the process before, uh, the book is, you know, is, is released, right? Before the book is published, uh, you know, you find deliberate efforts in maybe sending advanced copies, for instance, to, you know, influencers and bookstagrammers to read and just start to generate, you know, uh, for them to start generating buzz, you know, about the book. And I think that is just one area that in our own space in Nigeria that I think that a lot of uh, publishing houses also need to uh, devote a lot of resources and attention to in building that and strengthening that function within the organization. Have a very strong salesperson, someone who can sell, someone who understands why the book should be read and can sell it first to the booksellers. Because I think that, you know, they don't, a lot of times there isn't, there isn't much effort to buying and winning over the bookseller in the process. You just think that, it, you know, it's just the, the buyers and end, end, end users, like the readers like the book then to sell. So just knowing the role, the role that the bookseller plays in ensuring that your book sells, you know, in the volumes that you want, I think it's really, really key uh, to things like, you know, how the book should be positioned, you know, what kind of visibility you're giving the books in the bookstore or even on your website. I think that those things are really, really important. And I think that, you know, they don't necessarily have to be uh, because of just the nature of our own space where, you know, uh, you have small independent, you know, publishing firms, uh, and then there might be some initial struggles, I imagine, with hiring like experienced professionals from other uh, from other discipline. But I think that, you know, because the space is still growing, there's an opportunity for, you know, for the function to grow alongside the space too. Like you said earlier, um, um, uh, Tito, around the need to experiment with a, you know, a, a great deal of ideas, just figuring out what works, right? We don't have the luxury of like, you know, a marketing budget for running to tens of millions of pounds as you have in big publishing houses like Penguin Random House and the likes, but just experimenting with, our, with all sorts of creative ideas that can just, you know, pick the interest of readers, stimulate interest in the books. And then, and then also going back to ask, you know, if we're not pushing these numbers, what are the reasons? And and then drilling down, drilling them down to, you know, to really important and fundamental answers, and not, you know, the the much um, uh, cliched expression that people don't read. So I think that, uh, you know, having that function and devoting resources and attention to building and strengthening that function is really important to, you know, to the book value chain. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, Going to come back to, I like the fact that I mentioned the fact that people say Black people don't read or Nigerians don't read. So we are going to come back to that. But um, I did also, also wanted to ask another question as regards this. You own a book, um, you own a bookshop. So for aspiring booksellers that are on air, what, um, what are the roles and the responsibilities that a good bookseller needs to have for them to learn about? Um, I think, you know, the fundamental one is um, uh, a love for books, 
I think that you know the best booksellers that we have in our store and our stores or in our organization are people who are like you know who are who have this deep undying love for books. They're people who you would say come to work on a Saturday on a Sunday and they'll be happy to uh you know I think that that's that's really, really fundamental just you know the fact that we're excited being in a space or in space with books um even if they are thinking that it's key I think just the capacity or the ability to also listen to to what your readers want I, I find that that's also very 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 important uh you know a lot of times like people want something you don't have it but just you know you know listening and, and and taking notes to also pass on that feedback either to like you know your managers or your supervisors to say these are things that are really really important i think that's key uh of course selling right if you're in this storefront i think that selling is, is it's a very very important skill how do you sell right? how do you persuade people to say this you should buy this right even if you've not read it if, even if the only thing you you heard about the book is just like two or three paragraphs in the advanced information sheet how do you sell that if it's a if it's a genre that you're not interested in at least you know something about it and you can sell so that's uh that's important and again just to reinforce that i think it's also important to be like just naturally inquisitive you're not into gardening you're not into poetry but like you know uh you're you're the bookstore manager you're the bookstore you know assistant um you know enough you're inquisitive, inquisitive enough to be able to hold a conversation with a customer, you know, who's interested in that, uh, you know, buying the book. And again, just to reinforce the point around selling, like, you know, how do you, I remember once walking to a bookstore in the UK and I, I wanted to buy two books uh, on book selling, interestingly, right? Uh, one was a memoir of the founders of Waterstone and the other is just like, uh, I think, um, like uh, also a memoir too by, you know, less known, you know, bookseller. And then, you know, I was, you know, cross you know, caught between like buying one over the other because I didn't have so much budget and, and then I just walked up to the bookseller and she was able to convince me why I should buy one over the other and at the end of the day I thought like you know in hindsight the decision was really really right so how do you persuade how do you upsell you know because at the end of the day it's a business someone wants to buy a book you want the person to buy two or three more you know and then by the time the person is walking out the person still <laughs> is still feeling happy even though you've uh, succeeded in dipping a hole in the person's pocket right you know how do you uh, also cross sell to say well people who buy this also buy this just like amazon will recommend to you right the amazon algorithm so i think that those are like the you know the really important skills that you should have if you're if you're a bookseller Thank you so much, Adita. Um, a bit more. So, um, you work in a um, publishing firm, just like um, Jasmine. So, can you please like provide an overview of like the roles and responsibilities of in-house, like you know, sales and marketing personalities of people? Right. Um, I mean, I wish I could say, okay, uh, content creation, uh, relationship manager, relationship building all of that, but the truth of the matter is that when you work in marketing, you, you, you sort of have to learn almost everything uh, in terms of skill. First of all, like I think someone has said, you have to be like a pro-racial reader. You have to read the books, sell the books. That's just like the key point, because if you don't know what you are selling, you can't sell, you can't sell it. It's as simple as that. But in terms of skills, uh, communication is key because you need to be communicating with the authors as well as the readers. I mean, who will come up to you and ask you questions about Masobi books or, you know, wherever it is you work for? So you need to know how to think and communicate creatively. And I think another important point in, in terms of content is, like, you have to follow the trend. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of social media myself, which is, like, ironic. But... I still, you still need to know what is happening on social media. You still need to know what the trends are. You still need to know what, like, the conversations that are happening so that you can frame your books around those conversations. And you can use those conversations that are already ongoing, the buzz of those conversations to push your books forward. And when you take it out of the digital space into, like, real life, you need to also create a relationship with, like, bookstores, um, book spaces, festivals, you need to have ongoing conversations at every given time with about 10, 15 people at once and keep track of what everybody's saying at the same time. So it's it's a lot of noise, but it's also something that if you are interested in marketing in the book space, it's something that you, you're going to have to be good at. And I, I do mean like instantly good at because there's also no room for errors. So yes, you'll be learning. Yes, you will make mistakes, but like make the mistakes 
20% of the time and be excellent 80% of the time. That is, that is what is required. So I think like in a lot of ways, there's really no streamlined uh, roles at this point that I would say, but your responsibility is be a good reader, be able to communicate effectively and be passionate about books because people can tell when you are. And passion is very, um, very contagious. So if you're passionate about what you're selling, people will be automatically interested in it. It's, it's, it's simple. Thank you so um, much. Can I just, sorry, can I just add, um, just like listening to you both, what also made me think of is about being an analytical thinker as well. So one thing that I think I personally came into a bit later than I should have probably was really understanding how to analyze the results of what you've done before and learn from those and then repurpose them for what you have to do next. Because essentially, for both sales and marketing, it really is your job to be the champion. Of course, the editor of the book, the champion of the book and the content, but you are, first of all, taking that, like helping the editor to see what's also going to work within the market, within the but without wanting to like, dishearten them but let them see the reality of in order to get this book out there this is what needs to happen this is what needs to be developed and then you are the person who is convincing the retailers or directly to the consumers you know in so many ways that this book should be read and I like Adi Dutton was saying even if you don't personally love the book you have to be able to see for yourself this has value for this community because this is happening. And it is, um, as I said before, a case of trial and error, especially when you're learning. But the best way to make sure that you actually learn from that is to have some sort of analytical process going on. Um, and the sooner you get down with it and get comfortable with that, because I, I have to admit, I'm a person that doesn't necessarily enjoy that part as much. But when you can get away of make, incorporating, or incorporating that into what you do, you learn so much quicker from what you've done before. And then you're able to improve your, your way of approach and, and your, your processes. Thank you and, so um, much. Jasmine. Quickly, yeah, sorry, yeah, to lift in on what Jasmine has said. Uh, the thing is that you, as a marketer, you need to be involved in all the processes the book is going through, right? Mm-hmm. So nobody, the editor, the producer, is not just going to drop like the finished product on your, on your desk and be like, okay, market this, you know? So for, for us, right from like probably when the manuscript first comes into the company, you are aware. You've probably read about five to six different versions of that book, you know? You've gone with the editor. You've had a conversation with the editor in terms of, okay, so this is how, what I think like the market is looking for, and this is what the book is. So you need to marry the two together. So you are looking on all of the processes down to the book cover designs, the back cover blobs, the getting of blobs from like outside sources. You are in those conversations. So as a marketer, you're not just taking a printed book and going to the bookstores or going to the road and begging people like buy these books from you. You need to know all of what the book has gone through. So like, just in case you are called off to champion the book, to defend the book, you will be a car carrying member, you fight all the enemies you will stand because that is, that is your job. So yeah, you need to know every single thing, every single process, every single step. I'm not saying know it in depth, but have an idea of what those processes entail because that is the only way you would actually be a successful marketer. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, like, I, I hope I am not uh, overflogging your point, uh, Ebimu. Um, you know, I was having a conversation with a, a sales and marketing manager of a, of, a, of a publishing house recently. I think it was last week, you know, quite, quite recent. Uh, and then it was about the choice of the book cover. And I said, look, like, you guys have done a great injustice to this book by opting for like this hideous cover, right? You know, and and it's like, oh well, uh, I couldn't. The author insisted that she was going to, you know, you know, design the cover herself. And I'm like, yeah, but if you're, you're a sales and marketing guy, you should have put your foot down, you know, to you know to insist that you know um, I am not going to back this book because it's not going to do well, right? Because at the end of the day, you'll be accessed, your performance will be assessed based on the number of books that you're able to push. But like, you know, no one's no one's going to buy this book. There's a UK, there's a US, US edition that has like a beautiful cover and then they have beautiful covers. And why would they all for like something that is looking this EDS, right? So yeah, I think it's it's really, really important, you know, the input of a sales and marketing person, even in the choice of like things like what the cover looks like, you know, and, and how it's eventually presented to the reading public. Mm. Yeah. 
thank you so much, everyone, for that very, very engaging um, answers, or for those very engaging answers. Um, so coming back to your statement, I did also on the fact that people say that, you know, Nigerians don't read, Black people don't read. But the fact that we even have publishing houses that cater to Black people, to African people, the fact that Roving Heights even exists means that we do read. Yeah. So um, how can aspiring professionals, how can they build a strong understanding of consumer behavior that is particular to the particular um, region that they are in? and market trend so that it can make book informed decisions in book selling, in the sales, and in the marketing process? Uh, that seems like a very difficult um, you know, question, to be honest, like you know, in this climate where I am, you know, I, I don't have the uh, the benefit of of decades of experience, like you know, I've just I'm, I'm less than ten years, you know, as a bookseller officially, right? Um, and uh, but I but nonetheless, I think that the first step to really really understanding, you know, like consumer behavior is just a devotion and a dedication to collecting and tracking data, right? You know, and I think that that's something that you know that you know res, you know that I, that I that I agree, you know, sentiment I agree that you know expressed earlier by you know Jasmine and say like we don't know how much of most of these tropes that you know these cliche things that people say around like we don't read, I don't really think that they are truly grounded in fact, you know, and the only way you can challenge those you know perspectives, you know, is to have like the data to say well you know, um, there's a lot of reading going on, maybe not physical books, but perhaps people are reading on their phones, people are reading on their tablets, you know, people are reading on their computers because, you know, there aren't enough bookstores or because the available bookstores have, have books are expensive and they can't afford. So perhaps the purchasing power problem, right? But there's, you know, there, there's, there's a great deal of reading that is going on, um, you know. So I think that that's, you know, fidelity to data. And just being conscious enough and deliberate enough to collect data. So one of the things that we do as a bookstore is every day at the close of business, you know, we ask all our booksellers to report how many people came into the store today, right? You know, how many people came, uh, and then we look at that over a particular period of time. You want to match that over something as simple as, you know, if you're running a marketing campaign, maybe an outdoor, you have a billboard out there to say we just opened a new store. You know, you want to use that to track the effectiveness of your marketing campaign to say, okay, more people are walking into the bookstore in response to the, you know, our marketing effort. It means that it's working, right? You know, so uh, just knowing that consumer behavior, like of, you know, sitting down to track data, right? How many books do we sell as a bookstore, right? We sell, we know as a bookstore that we sell 30% of our monthly revenue comes from selling fiction, right? We know that. You know, maybe that's competitive information, right? But we know that we sell 30% of our revenue comes from fiction, right? And then, you know, and that's it, that's like the biggest category. We sell more fiction than we do, you know. And then we know of the fiction, we know the category that comes from foreign fiction, and we know the ones that you know that are ascribable to like our own stories, right? And and just look tracking that data has helped sometimes in you know, in informing the kind of feedback we give to publishers to say, uh, we're trying to run this campaign or we are publishing this book and we only want to, you know, do a print on 1,000 copies. And we say, look, that's not the right decision, right? You should actually aim for two or 3,000. And we'll say, because a book in a similar category, you know, did this much, you know, just, you know, you know, so that's, that data is something that can help you understand better, right? You know, and then, you know, when you engage your customers, you say, why aren't you buying this? I'm not buying it because my friend said it's a horrible book or it's a shitty book, right? Uh, that's useful feedback that helps you understand that, you know, people want to read it. So if you, you know, when we started out, you know, one of the things that we, we would do, even though we had limit, like a limited inventory, was to ask people what kind of books, you know, or you walk into the store, you're only buying one, or do you have X, Y, Z other titles? And they say, no, we, we say we don't have, you know, we take note of those titles. We go and research and see if we have, a, you know, uh, we know the publishers have published those books. We have an account with them, we order them. And some of the best-selling books that we've, we actually carry today that are books that people requested for, initially requested for, and we didn't have. So, yeah, so that would be my, my response to just uh, how to understand cons consumer behavior and, uh, and trends. I think it's just, you know, collecting that data and analyzing it. Mm. Thank you so much, um, Adidoto. Jasmine, do you want to go on next? Um, just I, think, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I just want to echo what Adidoto said. That's absolutely, data is absolutely crucial. Um, and trying to find data from multiple sources. And, you know, we, we are 
in this time, um, really blessed with the fact that there is so much that you can find online and it can be like a whole world of data out there. So there is a, an element of having to like see what's relevant to what you want to do and, and sift through it, but it's really important. Then the only other thing I could add is also observing the world around you um, and sometimes trusting that over because what we often get, if you can get access to raw data, that's essential. But often when you cannot, what you're getting is reports that are someone's interpretation of that data. And definitely in the UK market, that interpretation can be biased or can be reflective of what that person sees. And I think for Jacaranda, for example, we're driven by what we see. So we are a team of Black women who we know we love to read, you know, the things we love to read. I, for example, am particularly passionate about crime fiction. And definitely when we started publishing, those weren't things that were being celebrated. If you did get African literature, particularly, it was very literary, and that's what everyone was aiming for. Um, but I knew that I wasn't alone as being a person who loved very commercial fiction as a Black woman. So definitely get, like, look for the data, but also if you have a particular, like, in a community or you see things that you're observing, trust that that it may not be the biggest audience, there's an audience there, and then delve into the data around what that audience is doing, um, rather than letting outside forces sometimes influence too much what you honestly believe to be true. Um, and then, yeah, as you do that, collect data for yourself, analyze that data, learn from it. Data is really mm -hmm. crucial. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, Every more, do you want to go next? Stemming from what uh, Adebosom has said, I think the feedback loop is like incredibly important because that is that's where we are getting our resources from. That is where we're understanding the markets. You know, there's there's no already established market analysis, so we need to listen. As a marketing person, it doesn't matter if you're the manager or you're putting content out on social media because there's always like a bit of a, a um, separation between sales and marketing, even though you own that, the, same. the people who are selling the books are not necessarily the people who are pushing out content on social media. They're not necessarily the people who are organizing author and discussions, stores and stuff like that. So there needs to be like a cohesion because you need to know what is selling. You're not going to be at the front desk. You're not going to be the ones who are handing out the books. You're not going to be the people at the warehouse who are dispatching the books. You're not going to be the ones who are picking the phone and answering customers. So you need to listen and you need to ask the people who are actually people facing, what is selling? What are people asking after? What are they looking for? And that's like the only way that you will be able to structure your marketing around what is being asked for. And like Jasmine said, when we started you know, pushing out, we started publishing, not only like there was, again, this belief, Africans don't read, Nigerians don't read. There's, there was like this thing where if you wanted to put like information, you wanted to hide it away from the black man, put it inside the book because we never open it. And it was so false because I remember that even growing up, even being the voracious reader that I was, I still knew three, four people who read as much as I did. So when you say Africans don't read, black people don't read, it's, it's very clearly false. But because the people who have been framing the narrative are people who are, you know, not, not us, and that is the noise that is getting amplified. We now need to create our own loop, our own voices that are being amplified. And we need to also tell African you know, authors, African readers that we are looking for diverse stories. We want to read crime fiction. We want to read romance. We want to read horror. You know? We can build all of these stories into our own realities and push them forward because that is what is like, that's what we need as an industry. We need diversification. And we need to listen to the conversation. That is that's just it. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, just begin back, backing off of what um Ibimo and Jasmine said um about you know the fact that people sometimes you also have to you know explore things that people like people would actually like. For example, there's this saying that you know, like Africans write only lit fic. Um, literary fiction, you know, no romance, no um, commercial fiction, but that's something that, you know, publishing houses here in Nigeria have actually started, like, you know, putting out quite a bit of romance. I know um, Masube puts out some romance, and I know um, 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 I know some other publishing houses do that too. So, yeah, thank you so much for your contribution. So, as we are moving towards the end, if anyone has any questions to ask any of your panelists, please just put them in the chat box. 
Um, thank you very much. So our next question is, what advice would you give to someone starting their career in publishing, specifically in terms of gaining practical experience in book selling and marketing? Maybe more do you want to go on first? Um, sure. First of all, like we have said throughout this entire session, you need to be a reader. You need to love books. Because books will require a lot of you. Books will require a lot of energy, attention, focus. You need to love it. Otherwise, it's going to seem like drudgery. Because why am I reading the same book five times? Why am I going back in there to look for excerpts and quotes? Why am I trying to frame conversations or bring up questions to ask the author? I've already read it. It's gone. It's finished. Let me put it back on the bookshelf and forget about it. So you need to be like a very, very passionate reader. You need to be passionate about literature. You need to be passionate about pushing literature forward. That is the first and most important skill. Once you have that skill and you put yourself in spaces where these conversations are happening, whether it be online, at festivals, whether you're showing up for book readings, people, publishing houses are actually looking for people like you because that is, that is, what, that is what we are looking for. That is what we hire. That, those are the kind of people we specifically ask, come in, let's have a conversation, let's talk. And I don't think there has been somebody who has been passionate enough about, you know, books who have read a good collection in our catalog, who has come into the office and been like, oh, I want an opportunity. I want to work for you and return the way. So do that and start from there. Thank you so much. Um, I did also, do you want to speak a bit about um, people that want to work in the book selling part specifically and, you know, how they can gain experience. Okay, so I think it's- Yeah, frozen. thank you. Uh, so I, I think that's, um, you know, one of the practical- well, Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. We can hear you now. Oh yeah, thank God. Okay, yeah. so one of the one of the ways that you you know get it to the door. Yeah, one of the ways you can get it to the door uh, if you're trying to get into the book selling space is uh, you know you know either you want to volunteer or work as an intern uh, for start for starters. I've seen people who are interested in book selling. And then they are still working in, um, you know, in other, you know, in other industries, but they have a, an interest in, you know, they want to become booksellers. And so some of them will write and say, hey, can I volunteer or, you know, uh, work part time with you uh, on weekends, uh, on Saturdays and Sundays, or when you have events, uh, can I, you know, come into the store and, and sort of like support? Uh, so that's that way they also. Okay, so I think that um, Adit Dotson's network has gone off. Um, Jasmine, do you want to just drop, jump in there while it's off? Yeah, um, so I would say networking is really essential. Um, it was really valuable for me in terms of just making sure that you are in, you're, you're surrounded by the kind of people within the industry that you want to work with, whether it's just the area or just generally. So I think that's the first way in, get yourself a really, really strong network of people within the industry. Um, people who will also be your champions, people that will often like mentor you, but also sort of knowledge sharing that comes from that. So yeah, building your network is really key. And that's just going to book events, you know, watching conversations online, engaging on like LinkedIn. Um, so I think that's really key. Um, and I would also say, um, in terms of getting yourself in, yeah, make yourself open to, I think it can be, especially if I think of a Lond London context, it's really hard at the moment to do sometimes internships that they can't be paid because it's just very difficult. Um, I would say when you're looking for your first job in publishing, even if you know where you want to go, don't be close to other opportunities. So I think actually we're talking about sales and marketing. So I think it often goes the other way um, that people generally flock to like, they want to do editorial, they want to do editorial and they don't even consider anything else. I think people that already know they want to do sales and marketing tend to be more open to learning from other areas, but getting an entry level job within either publishing or book selling. And I would say that 
they're not separate. Like being a bookseller can can prepare you very well for entering into a publishing house, particularly for doing sales or marketing role, because then you know that experience as well. So getting an entry level role anywhere within the book trade, I think can be a really strong first step. Don't be limited to think if I only want to do this one thing, it has to go that way. Um, I think, yeah, those would be those would be the key things. Yeah. Thank you, Jasmine. I did not, I'm sorry, you got cut off earlier. So um, yeah, uh, that was uh, that was really sad. I was also uh, talking about you know uh, a way to get in. Um, you know, you sign up if you have you're working in another industry and you want to transition into the book selling space. You might want to volunteer or work on weekends. You know, either you know um, you know, whether it's paid or unpaid. You know, just so you can. And I think it's always very helpful if you're disclosing that this is one space that I want to. You know, I want to help because that trust building is uh, is very very important. Um, then I also think that the because of the peculiar nature of our own markets, there aren't too many bookstores. You know, um, you know, um, you know, for the size of, of 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 our cities, right? So there's opportunity to just wing it, right? You can start by using like social media platforms. You know, you create a Twitter account or an Instagram account. Uh, you don't really, you know, if you don't have the capital, you can, you know, arrange with an existing bookstore where they give you the books that are discounted uh, or explore the drop shipping route, you know, just so that you can, you know, uh, build like a, a, a decent client base. Uh, and then, I mean, I mean, it's just a way of just sort of like, you know, retelling our own stories of how we started, right? You know, don't don't feel that you have to be like a big store when you open your first bookstore, right? You know, I remember, you know, in our early days, uh, people would say, I want to come to your store. I was like, yeah, we don't have a store because we're working out of our dining, right? You know, and yeah, today we got four stores, you know, with with the potential to increase our footprints across Nigeria. So don't think of that your first physical store, if you want to go the brick and mortar route, has to be like some big fancy space, right? You know, you can start from using your WhatsApp, using your Twitter, using your Instagram handle to sell and connect with readers. And once you build trust and people know that you're you're in, you're in, you're in the business for the long haul, like, you know, publishers will support you. Other bookstores will support you because I think that is one of the things I've seen in our space that we're very collaborative here. Yeah. Mm. Thank and you also, so much. Sorry, mm -hmm. also just to add, if you are, particularly if you're a graduate or you're very young and you're coming into this industry and you really want to be in, in publishing, but you are struggling to get experience within publishing, there are many transferable skills that will allow you to come into publishing at a later time. So if you do need to get a job in another area um, that is outside of the industry, it doesn't mean you have to give up on wanting to be in publishing. You maintain that focus through networking and events and, you know, and they have things online you can do courses on even linkedin they'll give you things that will help teach you and if you need to get another job in the meantime that's not necessarily within the book trade don't feel like that has to take you away from publishing just focus on whatever you do are the transferable skills going to eventually take me back to what i want to do i think that's really important because sometimes we do have to make those adjustments but as long as you keep in the long-term vision what you want to do you can always make your way back with those transferable skills mm. yeah Thank you so much, everyone. Um, so very quickly, we are going to be going through the questions. And um, the first question says, I'm not sure if this was answered already, but did any of the speakers get degrees in marketing slash sales? And if not, how did they break into the industry slash gain experience? So um, I think that this question has actually already been answered. Um, I know Ebimo said she got a degree in law. Um, I know Jasmine, everyone just has different um, ways of um, entry. I actually don't have to get an, a degree in marketing or sales. Um, Jasmine has already said that you can start somewhere else. You can um, have a degree. You can, um, what's it called? You can start a job in a industry outside of publishing and they just use transferable skills to come in. And I did also I said that I started small. We started from a think that you have um, you need to have degrees in this area but if anyone wants to add to it okay um so we are going to go to the second question it says i'm currently trying to transition into book marketing having worked as an editorial intern when i was in university i'd like to ask if there's any course or materials that i can recommend or specific pointers that i can give um Ebimo, do you want to take this one um, okay, so of course there's the Coursera's of the world where you can sign up for online courses. Uh, there are books on marketing that you can read. 
Well, I think majorly what you need to do is basically pick a particular area that you want to do. You know, when you say marketing, that is quite wide. You can you pick a specialty. Do you want to do content marketing for books? If you want to do content marketing for books, then there's no deeper education than going on social media, learning what like the bigger content marketing and publishing houses are doing, what the smaller and um, publishing houses are doing, and just like seeing how how it is possible to bring conversations around it. And also, um, when you say I want to transition into marketing, marketing is one of the most transferable skills ever. You know, just not like I want to enter into book marketing, I want to sell books. You want to sell, period. So that should be the major focus. How do I sell? And then if you can learn marketing at any other organization that isn't even, even if it's like publishing adjuvant, or even if you're selling a product, because that is what a book is. A book is essentially a product. So if you want to learn, for instance, product marketing, you want to learn content marketing, all of those are terrible skills. So yeah, I will not say that one specific book changed my entire perspective on marketing, and this is the one you should read if you want to learn everything around marketing, because there's, I don't, in my experience, I've not come across any such book. I've not come across any such book. I've done content marketing courses in Sarah, I've done on Udemy, I've switched, in between, I've left some courses halfway, and I'm not going to say like one taught me this and another one did not teach me anything. I think the biggest education for me has been on the job. So find an opportunity in marketing, learn the ropes, transition maybe from your editorial internship to an internship in marketing, and can have a skill for publishing now, because that is probably the fastest way you will learn. Yeah. Thank yeah, you think- so much. Mm-hmm. So I just want to echo that 100%. I agree. Like everything I learned, my degree was in with, with Spanish, with linguistics, had nothing to do with marketing or sales or, or any of the things I ended up doing really, um, aside from my passion for language and for reading. Um, but definitely marketing, um, as it was said before, it's one of the most, it has the most like transferable skills in it. I think you just go into it. Don't, don't, don't limit your thinking at all that because you've done editorial until now, you cannot make that change. I think just make sure that you are, you go for it. Um, and then think of why I think in terms of if you're going to be going for those opportunities, what's going to make the difference if you're worried about anyone saying, well, you've only done editorial, they're going to ask why. So think for yourself, why, what is it about marketing that makes you want to go there and move away from the editorial space and focus on that why and move forward in that direction rather than focus on what skills you have to fit in. If you know why you want to do it and you can um, translate that and, and let someone know that, you're a marketer so what you're supposed to do be able to do that for other books if you can really show that's what why you want to do that um then I think that will be that's half the battle one and um to piggyback on what Jasmine has already said it was actually made to switch in publishing from editorial to marketing and since I was already in the space I literally went to my boss's office in a conversation and I was like well I think I want to do marketing why because I have read, I have edited, I have proofread, I have done almost every other step in publishing process, and I haven't done marketing. And I really, really think that that is something that I should explore. (laughs) And that was how I got the job. So I know that it's not necessarily like the same progression. I just say, if you're already in the book space, you you can ask for a change. It's not it's not beyond the realm of possibility. And people will listen to you because we do need marketers. There's a dearth of marketers in the market. So people are looking for. So if you say, oh, this is what I'm interested in, the chances are your boss, the people who are above you, will probably go, okay, let's give you a try. Yeah, I mean, just to reinforce like the you know the points that you know you've you you, you would have made um around how this person can can transition. I think that there are loads of resources online, uh, you know, around just marketing that that can be adapted for you know for our own industry. But there are also specific uh, materials as well on online. You know, so I know for instance, uh, you know, you have uh, the Emiratis. They have this yearly started last year called. Uh, booksellers conference, right? Shaja booksellers conference, where they have like sessions, and I think some of those materials.
So I think um, Ali Dotson's network has gone off again. Um, so that was um, the last question and we are officially going to be bringing this to a close. Um, thank you so much everyone for joining us on the sales and marketing panel. This was the last panel in the Bim Black in Publishing Forum. And we are delighted that everyone could join us. Um, I did not you froze a bit. And I was just saying like, you know, talking about some specific uh, platforms on, on YouTube where you could get like some helpful resources. Uh, the Shaja Book Sellers Conference. So if you look at the, the organizers of the Shaja Book, Book Fair, they have a Book Sellers Conference that happened uh, May every year. Uh, they have some of the YouTube videos you can watch. Uh, or European and International Booksellers Federation have a yearly rise booksellers exchange. I think that they also have helpful resources. Some of the presentations are online you can watch. You can subscribe to like industry magazines like booksellers. You know, I found that really, really helpful, you know, just to understand like, you know, the market. Like it's it's a bit pricey at the uh, one and something pounds, you know, uh, you know, in the light of our current exchange regime, FX regime, right? But I, I, I think it's a very useful resource, like, you know, that I find just to understand the market better, you know, to understand the trends, you know, and all that. So I think that those are like really helpful. And then, you know, panel sessions like these attend festivals, you know, listen to like the panel sessions, you know, um, you know, talk to people who are in the industry, and then you know, ask them to mentor you. I think there's a very good way for you to transition and, and, and play in that role. Yeah. Thank you so much, um, Ali Dotto. Just to even add to that, we are going to um, compile all these resources and send to everyone that signed up for this program. So you have access to go back to these resources and um, just keep checking them time after time. So um, thank you everyone for for joining us. Thank you to our panelists for taking time out of your very busy schedules to join us today and to um, teach participants about um, how to get into sales, book selling, and marketing. Um, and this is the very last panel in the Being Black in Publishing Forum. And we are delighted to, for, for even getting here, we are delighted to everyone that was able to join us. There are some people that joined every single panel and um, thank you very much for joining. Um, so all the panel sessions, all the previous panel sessions on um, editorial design and um, book promotion, they are all on YouTube on our channel, Cassava Republic. So you can keep going back to check them out. Um, thank you very much, everyone. And we have come to a close. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you so much for coming up. Yeah, this has been brilliant. And also, I'm happy to be contacted if anybody wants to. I'm I'm often busy, but you can always reach out to me on social media or on LinkedIn. So that's another resource that we're here because we care about helping other people get into the industry. So it's always worth saying hello. Yeah, same here. Like you know, if you want to reach out, I'm on LinkedIn, I'm also on uh, on, on on other social media handles. So feel free to reach out here. So am I. Uh, I'm. I think a bit more active on Instagram and Twitter. So you can reach out to me there and I'll be happy to respond to any messages. You can also email the official Masobe email and just ask them to forward the email to me. I will get your email and I will do my best to respond. Okay. Thank you so much, everyone. And um See you all at next year for next year's Airbnb Black and Publishing Forum. Um, bye. 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 Bye.